Last episode, I built the main structure of this monastery atop the mountain, and it got me very excited to see this build completed. So grab your snacks and drinks, and let's get on with this video because I'm planning a big time transformation of this mountaintop to really put what lives in my imagination into existence. So let's get right to the action. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a lot to build today, so let's start off the way we always do by rolling that intro time lapse. Aw, yeah. So to start off this video, I really wanted to get this lake finished, and if you've ever tried to build downwards into thin air in survival Minecraft, you'll know my pain for this one. I ended up using my water bucket a lot to be able to sort of go downwards and build my way down. It wasn't exactly a walk in the park is what I'm trying to say. Shape-wise, I went with shallow water towards the edges and a ravine-like deep part in the center where I might make a secret entrance to the underside of the mountain later. When it came to filling in the water, I thought about doing it layer by layer from the bottom, but in the end, I ended up covering the lake in stone and filling up the water on top of it, and that actually did the trick. I actually thought this would make all the water below the surface layer flowing water blocks, but somehow they all converted to source blocks, so that's one less headache for me to worry about, and I ain't complaining. All that's left to do now is some detail work, but the bulk of the work for the lake is done, so that's awesome. And to everyone who's enjoying these videos and the rapid rate this kingdom is being built, take the time to leave a like. It really helps out me and the channel, and I would really appreciate it. I decided to do around 20 minutes of terraforming afterwards and got a decent chunk of the mountain filled in, but let's check this out in first person, so I will see you on the other side. As the sun is setting over our lake, I would like to fly over here. And as you can see, I've got tons and tons of bone meal on me. And we're going to use this bone meal to bone meal the floor of the uh, lake here. This is the type of thing that takes way, way more bone meal than you'd actually expect. So bring a lot. Now, we're going to want some kelp and coral and maybe sea pickles and just any old decorations we can use to decorate this place. Because we don't just want it to be seagrass only like this. I feel like that would be a little bit monotonous. But I'm not going to show you me putting down bone meal around this whole thing. So I'll be right back with you as soon as I've finished doing this. And we'll see if maybe we need to cut back on some of it. We'll just see how it looks in general. Well, that certainly did the trick. It's looking pretty dense right now, but I think as soon as we add a few other things in there, it's not going to look as brutal. We already have some salmon spawning in here because I think it's actually a river biome right below where we're building this. But overall, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to have to get some other decorations, and I think this is going to be really sweet looking as soon as we have a bunch of trees over here on this side too because... I really haven't built any greenery up on this west side of the mountain the way I have over here by the castle. So as soon as that's in, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a different world. Let's put it that way. And speaking of green, there is another thing that I'd like to address and talk to you guys about because we have a few options when it comes to this stinky savanna grass that's over here in this biome so originally i built this in a mushroom biome which i've completely covered with this part of the world right here and right next to it is this savanna biome over here and look originally when i started this world i never thought that i would build this thing so big that it would cover more than an entire biome but now we're getting to that scale where we're multi-biome and listen I'm no like world edit pro or anything like that. If I knew how to do that, maybe I wouldn't be building my world by hand in survival. But I do know that there are ways where you can actually change what kind of biome it is. So what I'd like to ask you guys if maybe in the future at some point, this isn't something I'm gonna do right away. We could change the biome here to maybe a jungle biome or plains, something with a little bit greener grass than this stinky savanna grass. But listen, I kind of like the idea of keeping this world as vanilla as possible. So preferably, I probably wouldn't do something like that. And I'll probably try to find a workaround instead. But, but tell me your opinion anyway. I, I'd be excited to know what you guys think is okay and not. But just keep in mind, most likely, I'll keep this as vanilla as can be. But for the time being, I've been working on a different solution and something I was going to ask you guys uh, how you felt it looked. And that is using some uh, light green concrete powder or lime concrete powder right here. 
to cover up a few of the spots that look like this originally. So they do have the savanna grass, but I've changed it out for the uh, for the lime concrete powder. So I might mess around with this and put down some uh, coarse dirt and some lime terracotta in there to see what it looks like. But tell me if you guys think that that is a sufficient substitute. So I got myself some terracotta and coarse dirt, and let me show you exactly what I mean here on a small scale. So I'm thinking something like that. The only problem is that normal leaves, as you can see, they start getting yellower and yellower as you start to get into the icky biome. So I had to use the spruce leaves that don't actually change color. But yeah, I think once you mix and match it a little bit like this and have some variation, it can look pretty good and the green is fairly bright. So if you do something similar right here and try to blend it in, it can probably work. And to be honest, as long as we keep the borders nice and clean in this same way, this part of the mountain, it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit like this, because we'll probably replace a lot of it with coarse dirt and build some trees and stuff anyway, so you won't be able to see much of the yuckiness. So tell me if you guys think that's a good solution, and also tell me if you're okay with me changing the biome over there to a plains biome, because that's what we have over here, and I'm honestly super fine with this type of grass. It's just, this doesn't really fit in with what I have in mind. But for the time being, ladies and gentlemen, let's not worry about what biome we're in or anything like that, and let's leave the naturifying for the end of this video, and for now, I would really like to get these structures finished and have this entire monastery finished up here. So the plan is pretty simple, put a diagonal building with a tower right here, and over here I'd like to put a couple buildings. So without further ado, let me gather up some materials and get ready for this, and we will finish what we started. So let's roll that time lapse. Oh yeah. This build right here is by far the most fun I've had with building in this game for a good long while. It's been really refreshing to try out this new style with the very new textured walls. And I've just been having a blast overall experimenting with this and making this whole project happen. This particular building is the part I'm most happy with as well. At this point, I'm no stranger to diagonal building, and I don't think I've built a single thing that isn't at least somewhat diagonal in this whole time lapse. I especially love how the roof came out on this structure. The pattern that's caused by the diagonal I find really pleasing to the eye. I think finishing this monastery is really going to balance out the other side of the valley very well. I wouldn't want it to be as large and imposing as the castle on the other side, but I need it to be a notable landmark, and after this time lapse, I think I struck that balance nicely. While all this is going on, I'd just like to express how grateful I am for all the support I've been getting from all of you, all the likes and awesome comments. It really makes me feel like starting this YouTube thing has really been a worthwhile experience, and it's been so much fun so far. My life has definitely seen improvement a lot in the past two and a half months since I've been making these videos. We're nearing 400 subscribers at the point of recording this clip, and as I mentioned before, I expected about zero views for the first six months of doing this, but you guys have proved me wrong, that's for sure. I'm enormously grateful for the great community around me, everyone in the comments, and everyone on the Discord server. All of you guys are awesome, and I'm very glad you're a part of my life in this strange digital age. I just wanted to get that off my chest. This has been a very humbling experience for me, and you guys are all champs for putting up with me this far. So after finishing this structure, I did some terraforming and laid down the pathways, and when you start putting in the small details like this, that's when everything really starts to come together. Overall, like I said, favorite part of the whole monastery, let me know what part you guys like the most. The next set of buildings are sped up quite a lot here, but I wanted to create an archway with a tunnel leading the pathway in between them just to create some more interest for the player when walking around this place in first person. I also decided to build a small dock for rowing across the lake or simply just going for a nice swim. The funniest part of this time lapse is definitely me getting a bit of an explosive surprise. Y you'll see what I mean. But for now, I think I've said my bit, so I'll leave you with the awesome jazzy music, and I will see you on the other side.
Now that is looking a lot more like it, if I say so myself. But there is something that this place really still desperately needs after all the work we've done. And to give you guys an idea of what I'd like to do with the rest of this video, if you take a look at the other side of the valley here, there's a lot of foliage going on. I've built this whole forest. There's a bunch of bushes and flowers. And I think that's what really makes this build come alive. The village isn't just pathways and houses. It has a lot of nature in it as well. And if we take a look at the west side of the valley that we're building on right now, well, it hasn't exactly received the same treatment. So what I'd like to do in the rest of this episode is plop down some trees and really try to work on the foliage and greenery. One thing I added here after the time lapse is some lanterns right here to light this place up a little bit at night. And I think they look especially nice over here in the archway. I think having something like an arch like this is a perfect way to let a player know that you're leaving an area. And what I'd like to build right here in this episode as well is some kind of stone staircase to be able to get up the mountain a little bit here. Because as you can see, that part actually connects pretty nicely to the path right here that leads up the mountain. And as some of you may already know, this path right here leads all the way up to the summit of the mountain. And this place gives you a pretty good view of what we've been building so far. So yeah, aside from being uh, the, the home to many explosive creepers, I'm very happy with how this turned out. And it also has the doors into these buildings right here, which definitely need some interiors in the episodes to come here. But we will get to that in due time, that's for sure. So to name a few of the places that really need some tree action, I'd say this place right here where I've been uh, storing my massive shulkers is a perfect candidate to build a small tree. Then I think this area right here needs one or two. And then finally, I'll probably put one right here. I'm just going to go nuts and build those trees and give you a little bit of a tour of what it looks like afterwards. So... And there we go. So I did a little bit of greenifying. I, I mean, yeah, quite a lot, to be honest. But I didn't finish everything that I wanted to do because I'd like to show you guys how I do this. So for this part of the mountain, I don't think I'm going to put these vines everywhere. I think I'm going to leave a lot of spaces like this empty and texture them up a bit with different stone types. But there are still a few areas that I need to give the treatment right here. So how about we do that on camera instead of just, you know, doing a little bit of building off cam. But to get you guys caught up, I built that little tree there. I have this one, this one, and if you come around, you will see that I have a few more over here. In fact, the bulk of the trees that I built are over on this side. And this is the side where I definitely need to do a little bit more of this uh, greenificating. So I've got a lot of the resources that I need on me. So let me quickly show you guys exactly how I do this. It's a super simple process. You either pick somewhere like an edge of something like this, like right on the ledge, and you replace the coarse dirt on the edge. So just take this on the end and replace it. And then you want to make a little bit of a pattern kind of like this. I might leave an odd one here or there, but mostly it's me just putting some coarse dirt down like this where I feel like there needs be some there's no real rhyme or reason to it once I'm done with that I usually put some ferns over in the darker areas or over in the more covered areas because I feel like in real life that's where they are they're not like right up on the edge then we need to pick some flowers so for this side I think we're gonna go with some rose bushes and kind of sprinkle them around wherever we see fit maybe not make it too dense then the final little touch is you want to grab some leaves oh yes I feel like something like this suits this area perfectly and I use some roses over there as well just to keep the consistency I'm really liking how this is coming out so let me do a bit more of this work around the whole thing and I'll be back so that we can put in some of the more unique details and this is actually the perfect time for it to get dark right here because I usually like to hang a few lanterns off of these trees. For now, I think that pretty much does it for the greenifying of this place. Right now, I'd like to get to this staircase right here. So let me gather some materials and let's do some building on camera. So I just got myself a few different stone types here, and this is the perfect time for me to show you guys how I revamped the courtyard here a little bit. I added a few of these plants that I've been dotting around everywhere, and I made these little stacks of barrels. I think these are really cute with all these little flowers. I'm really starting to like the allium, to be honest. I think it's a really cute little flower, and just putting a few of these everywhere, it just brightens this place up a lot, so I really like that. 
But as of the moment, I usually have a lot of these things planned out for exactly how I'm going to build them and detail them. And to be honest, I have no idea how we're going to build this staircase. So this is going to be a little bit of a trial by fire. So I think the perfect place to put it is probably going to be like right here. And I think I want it three wide and cobblestone for the main part. So right now we just have to fill in the cobblestone stairs. Guys, for some reason, while I was building the stairs, I was really far away from the mic. So I had to cut down the clips a lot, unfortunately, and didn't manage to build it all on camera. So that's why this clip is a little bit wonky. Back to me in the past. I think my first order of business is just going to place one of these on every other one. So for now, this is kind of a boring stone brick wall, but I do like that it leaves this little pathway right here. We can just put in some stone slabs to make this a nice pathway up another trick is just going to be to texture this very very simply with stone so it doesn't look totally symmetrical and perfect just a little bit of texturing like this can go a really long way so i definitely recommend you do this in your builds it looks a lot better that way so i went back to get myself some andesite walls and i think we're just going to be lining these up all the way up here and now that all that's in place, let's just place down some lanterns over here. Finally, let's just texture up the actual staircase itself. And this is a good look into exactly how I build. I basically just build something and then it's like, oh, we need to ruin it again. It's a pretty long process to get something looking really good, but it pays off in the end really makes your world stand out. Something like this, I think, is perfect. This allows us perfect access all the way up over here, and then we can scale the entire mountain. It looks pretty cool from the air as well, so that's a nice detail. Staircases always add some elevation change, so it's always great to put some in there. The way this looks in the back as well is pretty cool, and I think it fits. It looks a little bit like something you'd see on a castle. I was going to add a bunch of details over here on this area, and I couldn't do this thing with the trapdoors right here here because they're on slabs so it's on a half block level if you guys have any awesome insane ideas how we can decorate this slabbed dock that would be awesome just leave them in the comments down below and i'll probably do it so next up i got a pretty fun idea while i was building the lake and i think it would be really cool to put some sunken treasure down there in general it would be really cool to just put a bunch of chests and things around the world for you guys to find in the world download and i think i want to put a chest right down here Let's see, what's the perfect spot? We'll just put it right here, I think. And what I'm going to put in the chest, I think is going to be left a secret. So you guys will just have to download the world. I promise it's going to be some great stuff. So definitely look out for this chest and other chests like it that I'm not going to be telling you guys about. So while you're exploring my world, definitely keep your eyes peeled because there are going to be little secrets like that everywhere. And I mean, if you're standing right here and you pretend for a second that there's not a giant drop off right behind me into nothing, it looks pretty awesome right here. Like I really transformed this place nicely. Wow, it just makes so much of a difference to put a lot of greenery down and build some trees. I definitely recommend you do that if you build your own world like this. It looks really, really awesome from down here on the other side. And honestly, this is kind of the first time. Well, I mean, I guess the vineyard and building this stuff over here. But this is really the big build I've been waiting for to just sit down on my bench right here. Look out up at the other side at the mountain peak and the monastery up there. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been a long episode and I I definitely want you guys to tell me how you feel about the length of these episodes. Do you want longer episodes? Should I aim for 20 minute episodes instead of the 15 I've been going for recently? Definitely tell me in the comments below, but right now I am totally running out of time for what I've been doing here. I mean, let's be realistic, I put in overtime with all this. And as usual, if you watch this video all the way to the end, you're the champ and I appreciate your existence. Ow. So until we see each other next time, have a good one.